Hello, Movie News Cast family, and welcome back to the channel. In the past 24 hours, we've received the heartbreaking news of the loss of some truly remarkable individuals. Today's episode is a tribute to their incredible legacies. Colin Chilvers dies, Oscar-winning VFX director who helped Christopher Reeve fly and Michael Jackson lean into Smooth Criminal was 79. Colin Chilvers, a pioneering, Oscar-winning Hollywood visual effects artist who created movie magic for Superman, apocalyptic scenarios, and even the Who's Tommy, died November 19 in Fort Erie, Ontario, where he lived. He was 79. His death was first reported Wednesday by the news station 101.1 FM in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Among Chilvers' more memorable feats were the effects that gave Christopher Reeve and Margaret Kidder the illusion of flying in Richard Donner's 1978 classic Superman, work that had him share in a team Oscar for visual effects. In 1986, Chilvers created the dazzling trickery that allowed Michael Jackson to defy gravity by leaning forward 45 degrees with no visible means of support in the music video for Smooth Criminal. Chilvers directed the video, along with various other Jackson video collections. Chilvers' post-Superman credits from the 80s through the 2000s also included Superman 2 and Superman 3, Bride of Chucky, X-Men, and K-19, The Widowmaker. Born in 1945 in London, he trained for his chosen career through Hornsey College of Art and worked as an uncredited trainee animation director for a short time on the film 2001, A Space Odyssey. Even before his Superman breakthrough, Chilvers had worked on special effects for such offbeat, often countercultural 1970s fare as 200 motels, Frankenstein, The True Story, Tommy, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, and Listomania. Chilvers' final credit was Shoot M Up, a 2007 action film starring Clive Owen. Chilvers' friend Andrew Harris told 101.1 FM that after Chilvers retired from Hollywood, he settled into Ontario and became an avid woodworker. Matthew Byers dies. Talent manager appeared on Bravo's Real Housewives of Potomac. Bravo stars Melissa Gorga and Cheris Jackson pay tribute. Matthew Byers, a talent manager who appeared on Bravo's The Real Housewives of Potomac, has died. He was 37, according to media reports. No cause of death has been confirmed. Byers is known to RHOP viewers as Karen Huger's assistant, and she introduced him on the show as part of her management team. He appeared in Huger's infamous press conference in season three of the reality series, during which she attempted to clear up rumors about her financial situation. Former RHOP star Cheris Jackson Jordan paid tribute to Byers by sharing a photo with him and captioning it, Rest in peace. Melissa Gorga of The Real Housewives of New Jersey also paid tribute to Byers in a social media post. Matt, why didn't you tell me, Matt? I'm heartbroken. Your personality was infectious. Your jokes, you always had them. You should have done stand-up. I know it was your dream. My heart hurts, Matt, because earlier this week you didn't tell me. I know life was tough. I know, Gorga wrote on Instagram. Thank you for bringing me my very first performance of O-N-D-I-S-P-L-A. You and I, we are loyal. They don't make them like us. I wish I could have saved you. Thank you for the memories. Go fly. Go make them laugh. Comedian Bruce Villanche first broke the news about Byers in a Facebook post, writing, Matt Byers ended his struggle this morning. Those of you who knew him can DM me for more information. Sorry to be the bearer. In an interview with The Daily Dish from 2019, Huger opened up about how she met Byers. I've known Matt since he was about 17, 18 years old. I encourage Matt when life is difficult. A lot of people call me Mama Karen in Potomac because I love helping young folk. Huger told the publication, when life was trying to him, I reached out and told him to go to school. And he did. And now we work together. Cal Boyington, a veteran TV talent and packaging agent at ICM Partners and Paradigm, 
who co-founded Vital Artists Agency and also worked on the Osbournes and executive produced TV series, including Workaholics, died November 18 in Los Angeles. He was 53. His brother B.G. Dickey confirmed the news to Deadline, but said a cause of death was pending. Born Michael Carlton Boyington on March 3, 1971, in Kansas City, M.O., he spent his formative years in Vail, C.O., before moving to Los Angeles to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. Boyington was an unscripted agent at ICM Partners, worked at Mandolin Entertainment, and served as head of alternative programming at Paradigm Talent Agency and VP Digital Slash TV at Rebel Entertainment Partners. He co-launched Vital Artists Agency in late 2020 with Rebel Entertainment senior unscripted agents Phil Irvin and April Yuan after the retirement of their former boss Richard Lawrence. The founding partners went their separate ways last year, with Boyington taking sole ownership of the company name, trademark, and logo. The split was amicable, and that all parties herein remain solely focused on their clients and the bright future ahead. The company said in an April 2023 statement to Deadline. Vital Artists Agency's clients included Valerie Chow, Moira Norega, and Vivian Payton, along with production companies Sunwise Media, Empty Quarter Studios, and Dola Media. Along with Comedy Central's Workaholics, Boyington's executive producer credits include the Hulu docudrama R5 Sons Alaska, Discovery Channel's Bible Quest, VH1's Cabo, and H.E. Nets' The Baker Boys. He also helped pack MTV's Emmy-winning 2000 and 2 to 5 reality series The Osbournes. His family said Boyington was known for his boundless energy, magnetic personality, joy to viber, and being the life of every party. Along with his brother, Boyington is survived by his parents Mike Boyington and Travis Pennyfarer. Andy Paley dies. SpongeBob SquarePants composer, prolific producer of records, film and TV music was 72. Andy Paley, a prolific songwriter, producer and musician who collaborated with such artists as Brian Wilson, Jerry Lee Lewis, The Ramones, Madonna, Elton John, Patti Smith, and Deborah Harry, and composed the scores for SpongeBob SquarePants and other TV shows, died Wednesday of cancer. He was 72. We are saddened to learn of the passing of Brian's friend and collaborator, Andy Paley. A post on Brian Wilson's official Facebook page reads, Andy was literally instrumental in Brian starting his solo career with his critically acclaimed 1988 album, Brian Wilson. Andy played electric and acoustic guitars, bass, drums, percussion, keyboards, harmonica, and provided backing vocals. He co-wrote three of the songs, including Rio Grande. Andy collaborated again with Brian on the legendary, unreleased Wilson Paley sessions, counting more than 20 songs. Brian always called him the genius Andy Paley. Love and mercy goes out to Andy's family and friends. Born Andrew Douglas Paley on November 2, 1952, in Washington, D.C., Paley launched his music career in the mid-1970s as a member of the rock band Catfish Black, a group that played clubs in Boston, Albany, and New York City, recording an album produced by Patti Smith guitarist Lenny Kay. Within a couple years, Paley and his brother Jonathan Paley began performing as the power-pop duo of the Paley Brothers. Although the brothers had built a fan base in New York's famed underground club CBGV, sometimes opening for the Patti Smith Group, the duo failed to achieve commercial success and broke up in 1979. Andy Paley then took a job as a staff producer at Sire Records, a prominent label on the CBGB scene. With his shift toward producing, Paley would work on albums in the 70s and 80s by Wilson, Lewis, Jonathan Richman, NRBQ, John Wesley Harding, and the Greenberry Woods. He worked as a songwriter and producer for Madonna, John, Cad, Lang, Mandy Barnett, Brenda Lee, Little Richard and others. Original BG's drummer Colin Smiley Peterson has died. He was 78. Peterson's death was announced by the Best of the BG's Facebook page on Monday.
It is with a heavy heart we announce the passing of our dear friend Colin Smiley Peterson, the page wrote. He enriched our lives and bound our group with love, care and respect. The message continued. Not sure how we can go on without his glowing smile and deep friendship. We love you, Colonel. Rest in peace. Peterson was born on March 24, 1946, in Queensland, Australia. He got his nickname from starring in the 1956 film Smiley. At age 20, Peterson moved to London and joined brothers Barry, Robin, and Morris Gibb to become a member of the Bee Gees. Vince Maloney also joined the group. After leaving the Bee Gees, Peterson formed the band Humpy Bong with Irish singer-songwriter Jonathan Kelly and British rocker Tim Staffel. The group broke up after a short stint together. Peterson started a management company with his wife, Joanne Newfield, with whom he had two sons, Jane, born in 1971, and Ben, born in 1976. In 1974, Peterson and his family moved back to Australia and he became a painter. Singer Tony Price, a mainstay on Austin stages, has died. Tony Price, the country blues vocalist who issued some of Austin's best-selling albums and hosted one of its most revered live residencies, died Friday following complications from a brain aneurysm, according to an announcement posted on her website. She was 63 years old. Price was born Louise Esther in Philadelphia in 1961 but called herself Tony when she sang One Tin Soldiers in a summer camp talent contest in Nashville at age 10. She issued a few country singles under the name after growing up in the genre's capital city, but relocated to Austin, home to a blues senior manager. Cameron Randall thought she'd fit in with in 1989. The move set off a 30-year love affair with the city. Price found a home at Antone's nightclub, and sisterhood with reigning local blues Queens Luann, Marsha Ball, and Angela Strelli. They were so encouraging, like sisters, she told the Chronicle's Margaret Moser in a 2001 cover story. No competition. Just, come on, little sister, hop on. In Nashville, everybody hates everybody. It's not loving like it is here. Clifford Antone was, come into the home of the blues just welcomed me. Never a songwriter, Price lent her honeyed alto to compositions by David Olney, Herb McCullough, Blaze Foley, J.J. Cale, Shelley King, and most notably, Gwil Owens, her principal collaborator since 1986. She was always content being the singer. I never worried about not being a songwriter, she said in that same cover story. Even if I change the song, I never take the credit. I can put a dress on, take it up, put on jewelry, a belt, whatever, but I didn't make the dress, and I'm amazed at songwriters. It's a sacred mystery, what they do. Some people open their mouths to sing, and that's what I do. Five of her releases ranked among Waterloo Records' 100 all-time bestsellers in 2018. The Juke Joint Madonna was equally disinterested in touring. She had enough of a fan base in Austin. For 22 years, she hosted a weekly Tuesday night, hippie hour residency at the Continental Club, playing with a slew of local pickers including late Austin Music Hall of Fame fiddler-slash-guitarist-slash-mandolinist Champ Hood, Denny Freeman, Derek O'Brien, Casper Rawls, and David Grissom. After retiring from that stage, she moved the residency to the Little Darlin', and then the Devil's Backbone Tavern in Fisher. After his death in 2001, Champ's son Warren picked up fiddle and accompanied Price for over a decade. Lawmakers are now mourning the loss of Kirk Schuring, the distinguished three-decade-long serving legislator, who has died. He was 72 years old. It was a quiet day at the Ohio State House Friday, and a leader's seat will remain empty. Ohio has lost its most effective advocate in the state legislature, Former Ohio Speaker Cliff Rosenberger said, Schuring, R. Canton, had been working from home or a hospital for months while he dealt with a health issue. Rosenberger, the lawmaker's close friend, tearfully reflected on the more than three decades Schuring spent representing Stark County. 
Shearing spent his life in Northeast Ohio, having graduated from Perry High School in Stark County and attended Kent State University. He is survived by his wife, children, and grandchildren. Shearing had been a leader in both chambers, serving as the Speaker pro tempore for Rosenberger and President pro tempore for Senate President Matt Huffman, R. Lima. He was the second longest serving lawmaker in the state. Kirk was a statesman, Huffman said in a statement. There is no finer member of the General Assembly or finer Ohioan who served in the halls of the Ohio State House. Kirk's heart was in Ohio, and it showed with his commitment drive, and integrity for the job the people elected him to do decade after decade. Shearing was the policy guy, passing dozens of bills to help the economy, update the healthcare system, and protect survivors of sexual assault. And he worked across the aisle. He was such a visionary when it came to seeing the broad spectrum of an issue. Senate Minority Leader Nikki Antonio D. Lakewood said, As a Democrat, I could talk to him about issues, and I knew that he would go to his caucus and bring some of those ideas of ours into the conversation. His bipartisan legislation helped make Ohio a better place to live, Antonio continued. Former NFL defensive end, coach and scout Tommy Hart has died, the 49ers announced Thursday. Hart was 80. The 49ers made him a 10th round pick in 1968 and Hart played 10 seasons with San Francisco. He also spent time with the Bears, 1978-79, and Saints, 1980. During his playing career, Hart appeared in 177 games with 140 starts. He totaled 83 sacks, eight fumble recoveries with two returned for touchdowns, and two interceptions. He also appeared in 17 postseason contests with 14 starts, and recorded one fumble recovery and half a sack. Hart, a member of the defensive line known as the Gold Rush, received second-team All-Pro honors in 1976 and was named to the 1977 Pro Bowl. Hart also was a two-time recipient, 1972 and 1976, of the prestigious Len Eshmont Award, selected by his teammates for his inspirational and courageous play. Hart was born in Macon, Georgia, and attended Morris Brown College, 1964-68, a historically black college, where he played all four seasons at offensive guard slash tackle and defensive tackle. He earned second-team MAYA All-America honors in 1968 and all-conference honors for three consecutive seasons. In 1993, Hart was inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. Mike Pinera guitarist for Blues Image and Iron Butterfly, dies at 76. Guitarist vocalist Mike Pinera, who co-wrote the 1970 top five hit Ride, Captain, Ride for the band Blues Image, then joined Iron Butterfly, Ramatum, and Alice Cooper's Special Forces Band, died on November 20, 2024. The news was confirmed by the Street Peak Catalyst website, based near his hometown. Panera was 76. The cause of death was reportedly liver failure. Panera had been ill for some time. A GoFundMe page was created in early 2024 to raise funds for a liver transplant, but had stopped accepting donations several months ago. Carlos Michael Panera was born September 29, 1948, in Tampa, Fla, and co-founded Blues Image there in 1966. According to writer Bill DeYoung in the Catalyst's obituary, band founders Pinera, Mike Bidimati, drums, Malcolm Jones, bass, and Joe Lala, percussion, met as students at Tampa's Jefferson High School. Pinera had been part of the Impalas, the Motions, and the El Dorados, teen garage bands. Two years after forming, the band relocated to Miami, where it became the house band at a music venue called The Image. The band then moved to Los Angeles and signed with Akko Records, releasing its self-titled debut album in 1969, the same year that they toured as support act to a new group called Led Zeppelin. Blues Image's sophomore album, Open, included Ride, Captain, Ride, a song co-written by Pinera, 
and keyboardist Frank Skipcont. Canera sang the lead on the recording and played the second guitar solo toward the end of the song. The single rose to number four on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. M. Jody Rell, the governor who helped Connecticut recover from scandal, dies. M. Jody Rell, the calm and reassuring Republican second-in-command who steadied Connecticut after a corruption scandal forced the resignation of Gov. John G. Rowland on July 1, 2004, died Wednesday. She was 78. She died in a Florida hospital after a brief illness, her family announced Thursday. She became governor almost reluctantly and at a time of great turmoil and she used her newly acquired authority to bring stability to state government in a way that was very much needed at the time, focusing on strengthening state ethics laws and rebuilding the trust of the residents of our state, Gov. Ned Lummet said. He ordered flags lowered to half-staff. Connecticut has lost a trailblazing political leader and treasured public servant who served our state with dedication and distinction for nearly three decades, Lieutenant Gov. Susan Bisiewicz said. Rell took office as a little-known lieutenant governor, but immediately became Connecticut's most popular politician, a status she enjoyed until leaving office in January 2011. Candyman star Tony Todd dies aged 69. Todd, who also featured in the Final Destination and Transformers films, died at his Los Angeles home on Wednesday aged 69. Tony Todd, the actor best known for his title role in the Candyman horror films, has died aged 69. The father of two died of natural causes at his home in Los Angeles on Wednesday night. He featured in the Final Destination and Transformers films, as well as playing the Starship Enterprise's Commander Kern on several Star Trek shows in his four-decade career. He also appeared in films such as The Crow, Night of the Living Dead, and The Rock. Todd enjoyed a successful career on stage too, including a run in the Broadway production of the musical Ida. Born in Washington, D.C. in 1954, one of his early breaks into the industry was in the 1986 Oliver Stone Moore drama Platoon alongside Charlie Sheen, Willem Dafoe, and Johnny Depp. Virginia Madsen, his co-star in the horror series, paid tribute to Todd in a video posted on Instagram, saying, I don't know what to say right now. In her caption, she wrote, My beloved, may you rest in power sweet to this sweet in heaven. The great actor Tony Todd has left us, and now is an angel. As he was in life, more later, but I can't right now. I love you. In a later post, she called Todd a truly poetic man who had a gentle soul with a deep knowledge of the arts. Former Ohio State diving coach Ron O'Brien passed away earlier this week, the school announced. O'Brien coached the OSU diving program from 1964 to 78. During that time, Ohio State divers won five in C double, a one-meter titles, and three three-meter titles. At the Big Ten Championships, Buckeye divers captured five one-meter titles and five three-meter titles. As a leader in the world of diving, Ron O'Brien set the standard for excellence, integrity and innovation in our sport, OSU diving coach Justin Soccer said in a statement. His impact is immeasurable, not just through the athletes he coaches to greatness, but through the wisdom and passion he shared with everyone he encountered. Ron's legacy will live on in the diving community for generations, and we are forever grateful for his contributions. He was a mentor, a pioneer, and a friend to so many. Our hearts go out to his family during this difficult time. O'Brien attended Ohio State from 1957 to 59 and earned six varsity letters, competing on the gymnastics and diving teams. He was the NCAA champion on the one-meter board in 1959. O'Brien coach Olympic champion Greg Luganis and longtime Ohio State diving coach Vince Panzano. He served as a coach for Team USA at eight Olympic Games. In 1984, O'Brien was inducted into the Ohio State Athletics Hall of Fame. He has also been inducted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame and the International Swimming Hall of Fame. The veteran actor who shares two children with his wife, Stacy Weitzman, admitted he fell short in supporting her when she battled cancer. See her photos.
Henry Winkler, famously known for his role as the Fonz on the hit sitcom Happy Days, which aired from 1974 to 1984, settled down during the show's run with Stacy Weitzman. A two-time cancer survivor, Stacy has been his partner in life for over four decades. Henry and Stacy's love story began in 1976 at a Los Angeles clothing store. The actor vividly remembers her striking appearance that day. Sharing in an interview, she was wearing purple parachute pants and she had red hair, and without her even saying a word, I thought, whoa, beautiful woman standing in front of me. Intrigued, Henry returned to the store a week later and struck up a conversation. Within 10 minutes, I learned how strong she is, he recalled. Henry and Stacy's first meeting quickly led to a memorable first date. Although she initially declined his offer to grab a soda, she soon changed her mind, and the two shared ginger ales together. At the time, Stacy had little knowledge of Henry's acting career, making their connection refreshingly authentic. Henry and Stacy married in 1978, two years after meeting. They welcomed daughter Zoe in 1980 and son Max Winkler in 1983, respectively. The award-winning Hollywood star also became stepfather to Stacy's son, Jed Weitzman, who was diagnosed with dyslexia. The couple's daughter Zoe was a kindergarten teacher and is co-founder of This Is About Humanity, a charitable foundation formed to support families separated at the U.S.-Mexico border. I could not get the images out of my head of these children, she shared, explaining how her own role as a mother inspired her activism. Zoe isn't the only one making an impact. Her brother, Max, has pursued his passion for storytelling. Now a director and producer, Max even brought his family into his work, casting his father in American Horror Story. Max's accomplishments in the creative field are complemented by his stepbrother's achievements in the business world. Currently thriving in the entertainment industry, Jed serves as head of music for the ticketing platform, Logitix. His business success is just one part of the growing Winkler legacy. Henry's family now includes six grandchildren, a role he treasures deeply. It is such a wonderful experience to be with them, he expressed, adding, We watch the sports, watch our granddaughters dance, watch my little granddaughter walk the dog around the house.